All right, hello OAS family. It is time for another book review. And this week we are going to be reviewing 108 Flowers, book three by Ming Ye. So this is book three in a four book series and it's worthy, worthwhile to note that uh, to get all 108 flowers, you need all four books. So once again, this is book three in a four book series. Uh, before we get into the meat of the book, let's just talk about the rough statistics here. So the book is 11 and three quarter inches tall by eight and a quarter inches wide. It is 144 pages and it has instructions in English. So if we will start at the beginning here, uh, we have a little preface, a little biography information, and then a section on uh, flower painting basics that covers materials and technique. So this section is actually quite important. Um, I would not gloss through this. Even if you uh, are familiar with this type of painting, um, what you'll find is that Chinese flower painting, it doesn't have a lot of techniques really, but that each one is really important. And so the deeper your understanding of the handful of techniques that it takes to really um, do uh, have an enjoyable time painting, uh, doing Chinese flower painting, um, you know, the better time that you'll have. So spend some time with these techniques like uh, where to begin the stroke, um, how to move the stroke, how to load multiple colors, how to position your brush. These are all things that are critical and are actually um, essential for you to understand uh, the instruction as it is formatted in this book and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So uh, here we have other basic techniques like um, uh, composition techniques and uh, ideas for how to render different parts of the flower. And then here we get into the actual subjects. The first uh, first flower that we're going to focus on is hollyhock here. And we can see the format here, just a short little paragraph um, talking a little bit about uh, the cultural significance, um, and giving you some storytelling, uh, placing the uh, flower in the broader context of um, Chinese culture. And then we go into the materials and the preparation of the colors. Uh, worthwhile to note that um, in Ningye in this book and in general uses what we have uh, affectionately start to refer as an east-west color palette where he's using a mix of Chinese chip colors uh, like the Chinese chunk yellow um, and maybe like indigo chips uh, or not indigo chips but uh, but uh, um, vermilion Chinese chips uh, mixed with uh, our best bottle ink uh, and then filling in with uh, tube colors from Windsor Newton, largely from Windsor Newton and a couple from Schmincke, and then uh, having a couple different whites or maybe uh, three different whites, like a Sakura white, a Da Vinci white, or a Bleed Proof white. So that's uh, basically the Ningye color palette. If you've been around his instruction for a while, um, uh, it, it starts to get clear. It's a little overwhelming at first, but if you have any questions about um, either how to purchase items in this color palette, if you want to duplicate his color palette exactly, um, please feel free to contact us. Or if you want to substitute um, colors for either colors that are more easily available or uh, colors that are cheaper or less complex, we, um, we uh, would be happy to assist you with that. You can just call us or send us an email, or you can check out a lot of our YouTube videos. A lot of our YouTube videos, we are doing lessons inspired by the lessons in this book, um, but they are uh, often used, uh, uh, we are using substitute color systems, so you can see how we do it there, and you can either copy it with the, the colors that we use there, or you can um, use the principles and use your own colors and try to duplicate it. 
So we're going through the Hollyhock here, and you can see here this format where he shows a zoom in of the final composition, and then he gives you uh, a, a stroke order, and he shows the directionality of the strokes, uh, and he also uh, accompanies that with uh, labeled instructions that tell you how, uh, what color to load for those particular strokes and how to do, how to do the strokes. So that is um, the, basically the format of this book. If you are wanting a little bit more detailed instruction, uh, I would look to his two earlier books. Um, when you have to cover this many subjects in a single book, something has got to give. So there's always certain value that's given in books. When they give you more detailed instruction, then they can give you fewer compositions. So uh, Ning Ye has always felt like all of his books were meant to be consumed kind of sequentially and the first two books, which is Chinese Brush Painting and Instructional Guide and the ABC of Chinese Brush Painting are the ones that people should go to first. And then once you see those, those books have more detailed step-by-step -step instruction. And by then, by the time you've worked your way through those books, I think you should be comfortable with the instruction in the, these books, uh, especially if you are able to see uh, one or two of our example YouTube videos. Um, about how to use the instruction in this book. So uh, that's that's basically that. So here is the hyacinth, um, and noteworthy. There's a there's a number of flowers that are like this. So we're featuring uh, lately here some larger shape brushes like our Phoenix brush or our new unicorn brush. So it's these uh, leaf strokes here, these very really large bladed leaf strokes that are very difficult to do with a smaller brush without sort of doing multiple strokes. And when you do it with multiple strokes, it takes more skill to get it to look like a single unified piece. So this is where having a larger brush like those comes in handy. And there are a number of flowers that have leaves like this and, and we'll uh, point them out as we go through it. But this is the hyacinth here, a little bit of the story, again, materials. And then we go into the uh, composition breakdown where he tells you step-by-step uh, uh, step how to go through uh, this uh, painting. All right, we'll pick up the pace here a little bit. Hydrangea, uh, a lot of blue flowers in this. So uh, this is worthy to note that um, the books kind of uh, have a theme in, in color palette. So there are a lot of blue flowers that are covered in this book. So this is the uh, uh, hydrangea. And then the iris, the iris once again has these larger blade-like leaves that uh, you, if you're, especially if you're gonna work bigger, like, um, you know, sort of this 18 by 27 size, it's a very popular third cut of a full sheet. Uh, that's taking a full sheet of typical handmade rice paper and cutting it into thirds. Um, that is a very popular size for finished painting. So if you're gonna work that large, um, you will find uh, something like the Phoenix brush or the Unicorn brush very uh, useful in painting these larger leaves. So we're gonna go through here, look at the iris instruction. Then we get to Japanese iris. We get like a slight variation here. Then we're getting into Jasmine. Here we get a nice break from the blue color palette and we get into some warmer yellows. And then the K-Pac. We get this nice deep kind of uh, orangey red uh, Then Lantern Hibiscus, uh, we've had a video um, featuring uh, this uh, a demonstration uh, featured on this. We did it for um, one of the Lantern Festivals uh, earlier in the year. So uh, look for that on YouTube. Uh, and uh, this is a delightful flower um, where you can definitely see where it inspired the lantern design and the, where, where the name comes from. This is lychee. And 
And you can see here, this is cool. It's like featuring these little geometric shapes that are, if you've ever uh, seen a lychee or bought one at a Chinese market, you can see that they have these little kind of geometric shapes to the fruit. This is lilac. Now we're looking into this purple sort of color palette here. And then lily. This is really beautiful here. Get you a close up of that. And then lily of the Nile. And again, we have these sort of bigger leaves here um, that you can use uh, one of our bigger brushes for. A lily of the valley. First time we have uh, featuring a white flower in this book and then you can see he does it against this colored uh, Schwen paper. So that's nice where you can see that technique and see how uh, the white is utilized with the colored uh, Schwen paper to produce this effect. It instantly gives the painting this kind of feeling of antiquity, which is nice. And then Loquat. And then iconically lotus, one of the most famous flower subjects in Chinese painting. Good time for lotus as it's starting to warm up, starting to think about summer as we get into the, uh, the middle of spring and starting to look ahead to those warmer months. Uh, and you can see, imagine sitting beside those lotus ponds on those warm months, seeing the dragonflies, uh, interacting with the lotus as they jump out of the pond. It's magnolia. Another, uh, we see white flower against uh, a colored Schwen paper. Manahot hibiscus. The morning glory. Myrtle. Narcissus. We also did a video featured, uh, uh, inspired by this lesson. Um, check out our YouTube channel for that. Night Bloom. This is one of those sort of flowers that you have to catch uh, blooming at night. Uh, because it actually withers uh, um, before dawn. So this is a very interesting flower from a, a story standpoint. Orchid, one of the iconic four gentlemen subjects. So it's nice to see here a lesson of orchid in color. You can see these lovely greens um, with the flowers tipped in red. And then this is the orchid tree. Peonia. or the grass peony.
the pansy. Passion flower. This is a very striking looking flower with accompanying fruit. Peach blossom. And then we close with some more uh, biographical information here, some old pictures where you see uh, my father and my uh, grandmother and grandfather, who was a very famous painter in his own right. And some pictures of my dad studying in Taiwan after he and his family moved there around, around 1949. And then in the United States with our whole family, you can see my sister, myself here in this picture. This is my dad graduating with his PhD from Claremont Graduate School. So this is it. This is 108 Flowers, book three. Once again, it's uh, book three in a, in a four book series. So we have uh, um, all four books available on our website. You can purchase them as a set or you can purchase them individually. And we thank you for uh, uh, checking out this book review. Make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this. We have a lot of uh, videos that we're producing on our website, both instructional videos uh, and um, ones that are more materials focused. Uh, and also te technique focused. And then we're doing these book reviews, which are really helpful. We have the largest collection of, um, of uh, sort of one of a kind titles, or not one of a kind titles, but titles that are very difficult to find outside of Asia. So um, if you really get into the books and check out our reviews, I think you will find a treasure trove of inspiration and instruction uh, that is um, featuring very, very high quality art. Um, which is becoming harder and harder to find. You know, with the advent of YouTube and, uh, you, uh, you know, um, people are able to share things so easily. We love that and we love uh, all the content that you're able to see there. But it becomes harder and harder to find the really good stuff. I think the, the, the good thing that was um, about the old publishing model was it, it tended to raise enough roadblocks that... Um, it, it often encouraged uh, the cream to sort of rise to the top uh, and um, by uh, to make it as a published artist, you know, to actually put out a book, um, you know, uh, we really got some some nicer, higher quality, even master level artists uh, producing books. And we are the uh, sole distributor for those books here uh, in the United States. So anyway, thank you uh, again and uh, thanks for listening and Make sure you like and subscribe this video and we wish you happy painting.